Hey guys, what's happening? So, got another 3D printer repair. This came in yesterday. It's a Flash, uh, Flash Forge, yeah, Flash Forge uh, Adventure 3C. And I haven't touched it yet. This is the side panel here, but um, interesting concept of a printer. You know, like I said, I see different printers all day long. So, um, I guess I've actually worked on a couple Flash Forges. Not this actual, the 3C one, but I guess the 3C one is like a more scaled down version. Uh, I don't see like an auto bed leveling sensor. Um, one of the neat, neat things I saw too is that that's like this removable like extruder thing. You just can twist it and pull off. So I don't know if I like that or don't like it because I don't know if you can change the extruder tip because it says 04, right? So I'm guessing if you wanted to change like a smaller nozzle, you just twist off and put a new one on there. But yeah, this one, only I can see so far is the PTFE tube removed from it. But the complaint was that it was under extruding. So, um, I gotta figure that out. But I guess it has a color touch screen, which I'm not really a fan of. Maybe in my other Prusa video, I kind of went into that. But, um, because they don't interface directly with Marlin firmware. You know, at least most of them don't. Alright, so the bed concept is a little it, trippy. You know, it's just held on by like a single linear rod and uh, that is... I'm guessing there's some sort of like screw down there. Tiny little lead screws though. I guess even the linear rods are kind of tiny. Um, also cooling fan. Ribbon cable. Not a fan of these ribbon cable ones, but I don't know. Because, just because the problem is these, a lot of these are... Uh, I've worked at a couple of printers where like all this stuff is proprietary, so but it's hard to even get the, get the replacement parts. So if the ribbon cable, I've actually had a ribbon cables go bad, and you can't even buy them. So or if you do buy them, it takes like you know they're coming from China, it takes like three three weeks to a month to get here. Um, so I've had to convert. I converted some like over to like wires from ribbon cable. All right, so another feature too is that I guess it has like some kind of auto loading filament. Which I'm not really a big fan of. I don't like. The, I'd rather just manually push it through, just because I have so many problems. I've, I've actually had to fix a, like a lot of problems based on this auto loading feature, you know. Um, all right, so let me. Get, I'm gonna go and uh, power this thing on and see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. But yeah, the, the complaint was under extruding. So all right, I got this thing powered on. Yeah, what sucks is like since I deal with so many different these proprietary printers. Um, you know, I have to like go through and figure out how they work, you know, because it's like I have to go through their menu system. Um, it doesn't follow like a standard menu system, let's say like, a, like an old school like Marlin screen. I noticed that there's a couple broken pieces when I try to pull this out, so I don't know, that's interesting. The filling just broke like that. Multiple pieces. Okay. Oh, so I have to get rid of that. I gotta preheat this thing. Um, what? Preheat. Okay. Alright, 220 should be fine. I think it's just at start. Yeah, I gotta pull that piece out there. Kind of cool. It's like a closed chamber, you know. Um, I don't think it's a heated chamber. Though. This is actually the cheaper model, so it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. But um, yeah, I, mean, I guess you can do ABS in here, you know. But it's I don't know. ABS is this. I'd rather actually print something other than ABS. Maybe like Nylon X or something like that. Nylon, I think, is better than ABS. Um, grab that. Push. Usually what I do is I push a little bit in and then I pull out. All right. Um, there's, you know, there's just stuff everywhere. Um, okay, I might cut the little tip off that too just to give it a, a nice clean, fresh thing here. But I need to um, get that piece out of there. It's like one of the downsides of not being able to actually pull and release these... Uh, self-loading extruders is that I can't just push something in there. I mean, I can pull the PDF e tube out, but it's kind of difficult to get back here. Um, even just blow out my air compressor, I can't even get it in there really. So, um, yeah, so I'm not a fan of those. So I got to find a way to get this out of there. Um, I mean, I guess I could load the film on in here, but let's try loading that. Okay, what's this thing doing? Can't tell it's spinning. Or okay, there it goes. Uh, 
I'm hoping it comes through and blows all that. Come on, man. Okay, load fill in. Okay. You need to trigger to 240. Why 240? Alright, there we go. Yeah, this stuff is really brittle, whatever it was. I tried to do this with one hand, but one of my favorite things for cutting tubes is uh, this razor blade cutter thing. It's funny, that was a Christmas present too. So it gives it a really nice flat edge. Um, I'm going to try this with one hand, but you just, you know, gives it a nice flat edge. So if you use like a, you know, like a wire cutters, you know, it doesn't get a nice sharp, clean edge. Um, all right, let me see if I can get that in there. <laughs> there we go. Horrible camera movement here. Okay, that's it. It doesn't go in. I wonder if there's another piece of PTFE tube that winds down there. Alright, so I pretty much know what the problem is. Something is not. It's definitely that PTFE tube holder. Because no matter what, that thing should know my clamp in, the, in place. I hope you can see that in light, but I mean, this thing obviously is not. This thing should pop up, so there's definitely something wrong with that thing. Um, Alright, I'm going to try to get my wrench in there and take that off. Come on, man. That's what these. It's already about these kind of proprietary custom printers. That's not, not, that's not a normal part. You know, for the whole PTFE tube, it's not like your typical, I think it's like a quarter thread, I can't remember the thread, thread pitch, but, um, that's not normal, so this will be hard to find, you know? I can't just go to Amazon, I don't think, and find this. Um, maybe I can fix that lock, locking mechanism right there? Put that into here, in the light. So maybe I can fix the locking mechanism in there, maybe? But if, without, if this, it's not gonna, if this, if this doesn't securely hold the PTFE tube, there's no printing. Um, because it's a boat setup. Alright, so I found something that might work. I, I don't know. This is just my box. I have tons of boxes of stuff. So here's like your typical, you know, Bowden setup right there. Bowden coupler. And that would like fit into the end of a hot end. But the, I can't remember where I got this from. Um, but the thread pitch might be the same. Possibly. But it'd be hard to get it in there with that threading. So I'm going to see if I can pop this out of there and see if I can... Um, figure out what's wrong with the, the thing. Maybe it's just new, I need a new sleeve. Not sure. You probably won't be able to see this on camera. You maybe. But see, there's some, some like metal, like little tines in there that grab onto it. Well, this one doesn't actually have that. That's a horrible design. Um, neither is this one right here. This plastic thing. The, the plastic itself is actually what holds it in place. But I definitely prefer the larger ones with the metal th grabbers that spring loaded. All right, so I'm going to try using this one right here. If not, then I'll see if I can go online and find the right one, but that should hopefully work. Okay, let's see. I don't even get that camera now. Let's see if I can get that in there. Wow, same thing. Okay, let's try that again. Um, got this thing actually locked pretty good in there. So, yeah, the cool thing about this printer is it heats up actually really fast, the hot end. So that's pretty cool. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, you saw before with the whole boat and tube was just pulling out. So I got cut a little bit more off just to make sure it was nice and clean. You know, there's no, there was no. The, the outside of the tube is actually what holds it in. So if the outside of the tube is messed up, it's not gonna, it's not gonna hold in there. You know, it's not gonna grab onto the PTFE tube. It's just gonna slip right out. Press OK and the cut. Okay, so it's still loading here. Okay, until the filament comes out. Right, cool. It's coming out. Okay, okay. Okay. I don't have a lot left in that filament spool. So I'm gonna do a calibration cube. Um, let me clean that up a little bit with some alcohol. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be kind of interested to see what happens without like a bed leveling sensor, like because you, there's no way to adjust. There's like no adjusters on the bottom, and there's no like deal touch. So I'm curious to see how it's. What was it? Not flash forwards. It's some other, I've worked on a couple other printers where they had actually had like a scrubber where they'd go back and it's there's like a like a separate like a little metal uh, piece of metal they go down. They first would scrub the the thing off, and then the hot end tip would hit like a little piece of metal. And that would give it the offset, the height offset. 
I know sometimes it sounds like I complain a lot about these printers. Um, but uh, just, to, you know, there's just annoyances, you know. It's uh, something I have to deal with, you know. It's, so, I don't know about this printer, but, you know, some of these printers actually have, like, proprietary slicing software. And so it annoys me because I have to go and, like, install, like, every company's proprietary version of slicing software. When um, I haven't checked in Cura yet, but I just use Cura. I mean, I can always create like a, a manual profile, but I like to, I, I try to emulate what the customer would do, like, you know, like when he's in front of this printer, so I don't like to stray away too from too much from that, but, all right, so now I'm going to create my calibration cube, and I guess I'm just going to, I think this thing is Wi-Fi, and um, at least from what I read on the web website, okay, support with Wi-Fi and USB stick, so I'll just probably end up doing a USB stick, and, yes, I uh, my Wi-Fi. And I put the flash print software on there. So let's see if that works. Like I said, I've never used this before. Let's just connect all. Okay. I guess connect. Connect all. Not even sure. Um, I mean, it's alright software. You know, it's pretty basic. Just standard, fine. I wonder if you can do expert mode. Okay, yeah. So you wanted to go more. I mean, it's definitely not like a regular Cura. Um, Let's go back to basic mode. So I'm gonna do fine. Just see how it looks. Slice, I'm guessing, and then I'm guessing it's gonna upload the file via Wi-Fi over my Wi-Fi network. I mean, I guess I could do this also with a USB stick, but um, send a prayer. Okay. Okay. I'm guessing it's got the preheat, and then. I'm really kind of wondering about bed leveling. <laughs> yeah, it sucks is I have to <clears throat> like learn all these printers because I want to do a test print, make sure it works, but I have to go through the each manufacturer's slicing software to, you know, it's like I said, I, I could do all this in Cura, but I want to see what the customer is going to do, you know, like what but that guy is actually, if he has a question, he's going to wonder and I want to be able to answer at least, you know, kind of look at the software. And, uh, because how I do it in Cure might be different than how Flash Print does it, so. Alright, so I really have no clue what's going to happen here. I can't even, wow, the opposite actually looks not bad. I think I might start with acid, man. I need to a light too, so I don't have a flashlight in here, but. I mean, I'll take a look when I'm done with it, but the offset doesn't look that bad. I can, I can just tell by, I mean, I've fixed so many 3D printers, I can tell what's, what it's supposed to look like. Is that doing a skirt or a brim? What is that thing doing? Well, like I said, I can tell how flat the filament is, that the first layer is good. The uh, Z offset looks pretty good. It's cool that it has a light, though. I mean, these are just things like that, or the small things are pretty cool like that. I mean, I love when there's a light there, that way you can see what, see what you're doing. So all the printers I build, like my custom stuff, I always put LEDs right there. Is that a raft? What's it doing? I guess I didn't really look so much on the... What is it, a raft? So one of the nice things about small printers is that you can print a lot faster. Because typically you have less, you know, lighter parts. Like this is actually a really tiny light bed. So you can really crank up the acceleration on these things. Alright, so now I, I, I'm just saying I'm not familiar with the slicing software, but yeah, see, look at the bottom here. There's basically a raft, and I hate rafts actually. Yeah, I think it's totally unnecessary. Because then it actually makes the bottom of the print look like garbage. So it's printing a raft, and a big raft. One so, thing I can say about this printer though, is it's it's really quiet when you close this door. You can hardly even hear it. So yeah, this is a printer inside your house. It's probably nice. Yeah, hardly hear anything, you know? Barely. Hey, right, there it is. Looking pretty good. Got a flashlight here, but 
Um, yeah, that's why I love these small printers, man. The uh, the ghosting is really re reduced because of the big bed. Let me show you here a bit of printer I got coming. Okay, one of the issues with these larger printers is just this this Y axis is so big that it's almost impossible to, to uh, you know um, limit ghosting. All right, so if you're in the Orange County area, uh, my link's down below, oc3dtech.com. But yeah, cool, another printer fixed. Flash Forge Adventure 3C. All right, cool.